Hey y'all, I've been playing the demo of The Legend of Heroes Trails Through Daybreak and I'm ready to give my spoiler-free first thoughts. Stepping into a new Trails game is like meeting a new friend for the first time. You don't know what to expect, but you just get that feeling that it's going to be a good time. Hey there, my name is Justin, aka Shinky, and this is Shinky JRPGs. Trails Through Daybreak is the 11th mainline game in the ongoing Trails or Kiseki series, and the first game in the fourth arc across the continent of Zamuria. NIS America released a demo for Trails Through Daybreak on June 4th, 2024 to lead up to the full retail release on July 5th, 2024. So I'm here to talk about my first thoughts on the newest game in the franchise. But before I get started, if you like JRPGs and all sorts of JRPG lists and reviews, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring that notification bell. I'm trying to hit 1000 subscribers by the end of July, and with your help, I think that's entirely possible. The demo of Trails Through Daybreak was released on PS4 and Switch. Just a heads up, the Switch demo only covers the prologue, which is about two hours long, whereas the PS4 demo is a chunky fella covering both the prologue as well as the first chapter of the game, and I clocked in about 10 hours when all was said and done. It's insane how much gameplay you're gonna get with just this simple demo. I've heard that the Switch demo is a little bit shorter due to demo size limitations that Nintendo has set out. Regardless of which version of the demo you play, you can carry over your progress from the demo over to the main game. Whereas Trails in the Sky took place in Liberal, then Zero and Azure took place in Crossbell State, and Trails of Cold Steel took place in Erebonia, this newest release, Trails Through Daybreak, takes place in Calvert. We have heard about Calvert since the very first game in the series, and we finally get the chance to explore it. Calvert seems to be thematically based on the country of France, mostly noted in the character names, as well as the way that a lot of characters dress. Agnes is a prime example of this. I really like how each region in the Trails series is so vastly different. Falcom is great like that. They do it with the E series as well. Trails Through Daybreak follows the story of Van Arkwright. Van is a Spriggan and runs his company Arkwright Solutions. What is a Spriggan, you ask? Well, according to Google, a Spriggan is a legendary creature from Cornish folklore. Wait, that doesn't sound right. Well, in Trails Through Daybreak, a Spriggan is basically someone who does odd jobs around the city to help its citizens regardless of who it comes from. It could be something as simple as recovering a stolen item or delivering a mystery briefcase for a crime syndicate. Think of a bracer from Trails in the Sky, but more of a morally gray area. I really like Van as a character. After five games of Reen, don't get me wrong, he's a decent character. I'm glad we finally get a character that's more grown up and not just all do things for the sake of justice, and because they're clearly the right thing to do. Van doesn't seem to do things from a sense of justice. Van is an adult, and as an adult, he has adult bills, and must pay said bills. So he does anything he has to in order to make ends meet. It's nice to have a more mature character, as opposed to a character from a shonen anime series. This is a good thing. The first game in the series, Trails in the Sky, released in 2006. It is now 2024. That is an 18 year time gap between the releases. So it's only natural that the series should grow up with its fan base. So my first thoughts on how the game plays, it's beautiful. Starting with the request system that Trails is known for. You get requests called four SPGs, basically stands for four Spriggans, and you get SP upon completion. This works in the same way as Cold Steel's AP system or Trails in the Sky's BP system. As you earn SP, you raise your rank. As you raise your rank, you get bonus items and cords. It's not incredibly different from other games in the series, however there is one change. A Trails Through Daybreak incorporates a karma system of sorts. While completing requests, you will get the chance to choose how you want to respond or complete requests. And depending on what you choose, you will get points in either Law, Grey, or Chaos, or a combination of the three. Now, seeing how I've only played the demo so far, I'm not entirely sure what this affects. It might affect an ending, or possibly it affects how NPCs or your fellow party members interact with you. I like alignment systems, and I'm incredibly excited to see how this affects the plot and how it plays out. Next, I want to talk about the combat. 
Trails Through Daybreak actually has two different combat styles. It has a basic action system and a turn-based system. The action system is used for regular enemies and is not all that deep, honestly. You have a regular attack combo, a dodge button, and a charge attack. Ideally, you use this to attack your enemy to build up your charge gauge, attack with your charge attack to stun the enemy, then use your shards to convert to your turn-based combat system with an advantage on the enemy. In action combat, there aren't really any special moves. Regular attack combo, perfect dodge, and honestly, that's about it. All of your special attacks are saved for your shard battle system. Turn-based combat is more or less what you've come to expect from the Trails combat systems. You have your HP, which is self-explanatory, your EP, which is used to cast spells or arts, and CP, which is used to use crafts or S-breaks, which are character-specific special and super moves. Trails Through Daybreak has a few things that differentiate it from the previous Trails games. For example, you have Shard Boost Mode, which can give your character a boost in strength for a few turns, and linking is also done different, as the Arcus units from Cold Steel have been replaced with Zifa units. In Trails Through Daybreak, you manually position your characters when you want to attack. Each craft can have bonuses if you attack from the front, back, or sides of your enemy. However, if you want to link, you must stand close to an ally character. This adds a bit of a risk-reward system. You can group your party together to have them all link with one another, adding extra effects to your attacks. However, if you're all grouped up together and an enemy has an AoE attack or spell, all of your characters will get hit at once. It's really quite genius and it makes you consider if the risk is worth the payoff. There is one more aspect of turn-based combat, but to avoid spoilers, I won't go into it. It's beautiful though, so be excited when you unlock it during the prologue. So I know you're probably asking, can I start with Trails Through Daybreak? Of course, the Trails series is known for its incredible world building, and yes, Daybreak does take place after 10 other games, is an ongoing story. However, that being said, I feel Trails Through Daybreak is an okay starting point. I would never expect someone who is interested in this game to play 700 to 1000 hours of previous games just because this one interests them. But if you're okay with the grind of playing the other games, by all means play through the Liberal, Crossbill, and Erebonia arcs, and then finally jump into Calvert. If you want to start at Daybreak, that's fine too. On the title screen, there is an in-depth database of everything across the world of Trails, from explaining various terms in the Trails universe. Don't know what a Septium Vein is? Or what the ancient Zemirian civilization is? Daybreak's encyclopedia has got your back. No idea about each individual country in Zemiria? Daybreak has details on each individual one is and what their importance is. It even has brief summaries of each individual game in the series, as well as the timeline with important events and what game they took place in. So if you don't want to play every game in the series, by all means, go ahead and start with Daybreak. Don't let anyone tell you it'll ruin the experience. Sure, it might improve the experience by playing the previous games, but it is by no means a necessity. Trails Through Daybreak looks as if it's going to be a completely new experience in comparison to the rest of the series, and I'm super excited to get further into the game. Are you looking forward to Trails Through Daybreak? And have you played all the games leading up to this one? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want more JRPG content, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. This has been Justin, aka Shinky. Thanks for watching Shinky JRPGs, and as always, have a wonderful day. Super Retro